In today's Inkscape lesson, we're going to learn how to draw a kiwi fruit. To begin, let's activate the circles and ellipses tool here and create a large ellipse. We want to be able to edit the nodes of this ellipse, so let's turn it into a path by going to Path, Object to Path, then switch to the Node tool here. Let's select all of the nodes of the ellipse and click this button up here to insert new nodes in between them all. Now I'm going to select just these four nodes that we added and I want to spread them out evenly. So I'm going to toggle on this button up here, which will make the transformation handles visible at the nodes. Then I'll hold shift and grab this top center scale handle here and drag up just a bit. Then I'll grab the center left handle, hold shift and drag out some. I think that's a pretty good kiwi shape. We can go ahead and turn the transformation handles back off. For the color, let's switch to the select tool and select the object. Then open the fill and stroke dialog with this button up here. Let's give it a brown fill. Next, we're going to work on a slice of kiwi. To do this, let's go back to the circles and ellipses tool and just create a random ellipse for now. Okay, we want to turn this into a circle with a diameter that is equal to the height of the big object. An easy way to do this is it goes to the select tool and select the big object, double click its height value up here and press Ctrl C to copy it. Then select the ellipse here, double click its width value, press Ctrl V to paste the value we copied and press enter. Let's do the same for the height. For the color of the circle, let's make it a lighter brown. Next, let's duplicate the circle by right clicking it and choosing duplicate. Let's make it a dark green. Now let's hold Ctrl and Shift and scale down the circle some. Ctrl locks the ratio and Shift keeps it centered. Let's duplicate again, which we can do with the shortcut Ctrl D. Let's make this one a lighter green. Then hold Ctrl and Shift and scale it down. Okay, for the inner part, let's activate the Stars and Polygons tool here. For the settings up here, we want to be on star mode. And let's set corners to something high, like 20. Then let's click and drag outside of the circles for now, so we'll be able to see the star. For the color, let's switch to the Color Picker tool down here and click the dark green circle to choose its color. Then we can center the star in the circles by switching to the select tool, holding shift and clicking one of the circles to add it to the selection, then opening the align and distribute dialog with this button up here. And with the last selected chosen in a relative two box here, let's click this button to align them vertically and this one to align them horizontally. Okay, next we want to round the corners of this star as well as randomize the angles a bit so that it looks more natural. To round the corners, let's first deselect everything, then select just the star. Now we can go back to the Stars and Polygons tool, hold shift and drag the outer handle a little bit, which will round the corners. We can also play around with the spoke ratio by dragging the inner handle. To randomize the angles, we can hold alt and drag one of the handles. We have to be careful with this because dragging just a little bit too much will make it go crazy like this. It will be easier if we zoom in some first by holding control and scrolling up the mouse wheel. And by the way, once we've randomized the angles, we can let go of Alt and it will continue to randomize whenever we drag a handle. Okay, I'll leave mine like this. Alright, next we're going to add like a border around this star thing and make it a lighter green. First, let's turn the star into a path by going to Path, Object to Path. One way to add a border is to go to Path, Linked Offset. Then go to the node tool and drag out this diamond handle here, which lets us offset the path. We can't tell at the moment because the colors are the same, but we actually still have the original path here and an offset path under it now. Let's make the offset path a lighter green, but not as light as this main green here. And we can offset it more or less if we want. we have it the way we want it, let's turn it into a normal path by going to Path, Object to Path. 
Okay, now we're going to create another star in here. So let's switch to the stars and polygons tool again. We can click this button at the end here to reset everything to the defaults, which is a normal five corner star. Let's set corners to something like eight and draw a star in here. Now we can center it with a slice by going to the select tool and shift clicking one of the circles. Then switching to the line and distribute dialog and clicking these two buttons. All right, let's select just the star and go back to the stars and polygons tool, which we can do by simply double clicking the star. And let's adjust some things a bit. I'll randomize the angles just a little bit by holding Alt and dragging one of the handles. I'm also going to adjust the size some by switching to the select tool and scaling while holding Ctrl and Shift. For the color, let's make it more yellowish. Let's turn the star into a path by going to Path, Object to Path. Then let's duplicate it with Ctrl D, make the duplicate a brighter yellow. Now we want to scale the duplicate down some, but if we try it by holding Ctrl and Shift with the Select tool, we can see that it doesn't scale down evenly at all points. So let's undo with Ctrl Z, then go to Path, Dynamic Offset. Dynamic Offset is similar to Linked Offset, except instead of creating a new path to use as the offset, it uses our currently selected path. So now we can switch to the Node tool and use the handle to inset it some. Let's turn it back into a normal path. Okay, now we're going to create some seeds in here. We'll use the spray tool for this, which lets us quickly create copies of selected objects. But first we need to create a seed object. To do this, we can simply switch to the circles and ellipses tool, create a very small ellipse out here, and make it a very dark green. Now with the seeds selected, let's switch to the spray tool here. We want the seeds to stay within the dark green here and kind of follow along the curves of these inner paths. So for the spray tool settings up here, we want to make the width something small, like 5. We also don't want to put too many seeds in one area, so let's set a mount here to something low, like 20. And we want to add a random rotation to the copies as well, so let's set rotation here to 100, which will apply a random rotation between negative 360 degrees and positive 360 degrees to each copy. Now we can click and drag to start creating seeds. I'm actually going to undo with Ctrl Z, switch to the Select tool, hold Ctrl and Shift and scale down the seed a little more. Now I'll try again with the Spray tool. That looks better. Okay, we can switch to the select tool now and delete the original seed object. To pan here, I'm moving the mouse while pressing down the mouse wheel. Next, we're going to create a half of a kiwi using the slice and a duplicate of this first shape we created. Let's first select all of the slice pieces. Let's group them together by clicking this button up here. Now they're treated as a single object. Next, let's select the shape here and duplicate it with Ctrl D, move it over here, Shift click the slice group, go to the line and distribute dialog, and align them vertically and horizontally. Then let's select just the big objects, and click this button up here to put it below the slice. Now let's select just the slice, hold shift, and drag in either the left or right scale handle. Let's double click the slice to enter the group, press Ctrl A to select everything in the group, hold shift and click the outermost circle to remove it from the selection, then hold Ctrl and move all of these pieces to the left some. I'm now going to select the big object, switch to the node tool, select these three rightmost nodes, hold Ctrl and move them to the left. Okay, next we want to cut off this left half of the big shape. To do this, we can turn on snapping up here, click this arrow and click advanced mode down here. Let's check path intersections here. Then we can activate the squares and rectangles tool over here. Hover our cursor over this point until it says Handle to Quadrant Point, then click and drag down and to the left until we have a rectangle covering the whole left side of the shape, and release. Now we can turn snapping back off, switch to the Select tool, 
hold shift and click the big shape and go to path difference. All right, now we're going to add some shadows and highlights to this. For a shadow, let's select the brown objects here and duplicate it with Ctrl D. Let's make it slightly darker. Let's duplicate again and make this one any color. Now let's click the object to get the rotation and skew handles. Then grab one of the rotation handles at the corners and rotate it clockwise a bit. Let's move it up and to the right. That should be good. Now let's shift click the brown object under it and go to Path, Difference. To get rid of this piece here, we can go to Path, Break Apart, which will separate the two pieces. Then hold we'll Shift and click the bottom piece to deselect it and press Delete. Then we can select the shadow again and click this button to put it below the slice group. Let's make another shadow layer by first duplicating this one and making it darker. Then we can move it down and to the right some, and rotate it counterclockwise. Let's duplicate the first shadow piece we created, shift click the other one, and go to Path, Intersection. Then put it below the slice. Okay, for a highlight at the top, let's duplicate the main brown path again. Let's use a color picker tool to make it the same color as the light brown circle of the slice. Then let's go back to the select tool and duplicate again. Make this one any color, rotate it counterclockwise, and bring it down into the right some. Now let's shift click the highlight path and go to Path Difference. Then we can go to Path Break Apart, hold Shift and click the top piece, and delete the bottom piece. Then move the highlight below the slice. Let's also add some shadows and highlights to the full kiwi over here. For the shadow, let's switch to the pin tool here. Click up here outside of the kiwi. Then we can click and drag at some points in here to create curves. Then click out here, go down and around the kiwi, and click the first point to close it. Let's turn off the stroke by holding shift and clicking the red X down here. Let's use the color picker tool to make it the color of the first shadow path we created over here. Now let's go to the Select tool, duplicate the Kiwi, shift click the Shadow Path, and go to Path, Intersection. Let's use the Pen tool to create another layer. Let's turn off the Stroke, make this one the darkest brown, duplicate the Kiwi Path, Shift click the shadow path and go to path, intersection. For the highlight, I'll simply create a large ellipse up here. Make it the brightest brown. And reposition it. Okay, the next thing we'll do is add some texture to the kiwis. We'll do this the same way we did with the seeds by using the spray tool. And like with the seeds, we'll use a small ellipse. So let's go ahead and create one. Let's make it black, and we want to give it a really low opacity, which we can do with this opacity slider at the bottom of the fill and stroke dialog. Something like 5 or 6% should work. Now let's go to the spray tool. For the settings, we can put width and amount back on the defaults. Leave rotation at 100, and we also want to add some random scaling to the ellipse with a scale setting. Let's set it to 50%, which will add a random scale between 50% and 150%. Another thing we want to do is make it so it won't spray outside of the kiwis. To do this, we can toggle off this closed eye button here, which will prevent us from spraying on transparent areas, including the canvas. One more thing we want to do is toggle on this no overlap between colors button, which will prevent the copies from overlapping each other. Now let's click and drag on the kiwi to give it some texture. Let's do the same for the brown part of the key we have over here. Now we can switch to the select tool 
and delete the original ellipse here. Then select the slice here and bring it to the top with this button. Then select all the pieces here and group them, which we can do with the shortcut Control G. One more thing I'll add to the full kiwi here is a spot for where the stem would have been. I'll do this by creating the ellipse here, raising the opacity all the way up, using the color picker tool to make it the darkest brown, then making it just a little darker. Now let's select all of the full kiwi, group it with Control G, and rotate it some. Then we can move the half kiwi over here, raise it to the top, and rotate it some as well. One final thing I'll do is add a highlight to the top of the green part here. To do this, I'll double click the big kiwi group to enter it, duplicate the highlight, hit Ctrl X to cut it, double click the half kiwi group, then the slice, and paste the highlight with Ctrl V. I'll make this the light green in here, then go back to the select tool, resize it while holding Shift and Control, and move it into place. Okay, that should do it for our Kiwi. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.